everybody, welcome back to the channel and the first episode in my Battle Report Lassa series. This series is actually just going to be a series of update videos based on the battle reports that are going on right now in the campaign on Lassa. Right now there's 12 players involved, 11 actual players and one that I'm running a proxy for. And I'm also running two small lances of my own. Uh, one is the HQ company and the second is the supply company. Now the battle for Lhasa is taking place 3062 on a small abandoned world called Lhasa, obviously, in between Liao, Steiner, and Davian Space. The idea here is that a House Steiner operative found information that House Liao was mining a strange mineral off of a volcanic island on Lhasa. The intel transmission was cut short, and Steiner, realizing that they have a small window of opportunity, gathered what forces they could and sent them to the planet. Using stealth leopards and drop pods, 14 units were dropped on the planet. The target areas included four sectors, green, red, orange, and blue. Each of these four sectors have prime targets that the players will need to take out. Green sector holds the communications array. The communications array is the only way you can get messages off of the island, as the mineral runs through all the rock here and interferes with long range communications. In order for the players to leave the planet, they'll have to capture the communication installation to get a message to their waiting dropships. Red sector holds the primary mining and processing facilities. The players have elected to leave this alone for now and are targeting the other areas. Orange sector is the main city. It houses the airport, a large storage facility full of mech parts and other things, and the docks, where a lot of ships come in and out of. The airfield is a strategic resource. Without taking the airfield, it would put the players in serious interdiction from any enemy fighters. They only have two turns of their own fighter cap in order to suppress the enemy. So if they don't take that airfield within two turns, they're going to find their supply lines cut off. Blue sector is where the main volcano is. And on top of that dormant volcano is a large naval gun installation. This is what's keeping dropships from being able to land on the planet. Although the players can take the communication array and get communications off to their dropships, if they don't take the naval gun position, the dropships could get destroyed on the way down. So those are the four sectors. I'll go over the rules really, really quickly. There's several icons on the map that represent enemy forces. They're fixed gun emplacements, which are missions like destroy base or a blackout mission. Their mobile forces are large forces represented by a very large number. These numbers represent a total skull unit value in that target hex. In order to be able to, to defeat the entire unit, multiple forces of players will need to attack that same mobile unit. Each can choose their own skull value of battle. So one player could choose a three and a half skull mission and another could choose a one and a half skull mission and both defeat forces on that hex. So they would defeat five skulls of enemy if they both won their matches. There's also fixed skull mobile units. These mobile units have a skull value equal to the mission you need to take. So if this mobile unit had a skull value of three on it, you'd have to take a three skull mission in order to defeat it. Those missions for the mobile units are just basically battles. So any battle will do. Then we have random convoy units. These act basically the same as the mobile mech units. There's a skull value and players can determine how much of that skull value they wish to attack. And then there's also fixed skull convoy units, which means you need to attack the entire value in that hex. Also to make things a little trickier for the player, we've introduced the concept of supply. There's three supply states. One is being in good supply and you'll change your settings based on that. So if you're in good supply, you have a mech recovery chance 90%. Your payment options and salvage options are set to generous. And any stuff that you sell out of your mech bay can be sold at 18% of at the value rather than 13% of the value. For this particular campaign, no unit will be considered in good supply as they'll need to be on a friendly planet in order for that to take effect. The best case supply scenario for the players is being what's considered in supply. Being in supply means your mech recovery chance is set to 70% and your salvage and payment values are set to normal for any missions that you take. You'll also be setting your store selling values to 13%. Mechs are considered in supply as long as they're next to a supply base or can draw a direct line back to a supply base or are within three hexes of the headquarters unit or the supply company unit, both of which are run by me. If the conditions for being in supply aren't met, then the unit is considered out of supply. At this point, things can get bad. Mech recovery chance is being set to 40%. Your selling values for the store values are set to 5%. 
and your mech salvage and payment options are now set to stingy for any missions you take. This also means that if you lose a mech while you're fighting, you cannot repair it, meaning you're down a mech until you become in supply again. If your pilots get injured, you cannot swap out any replacements, and you cannot field any reserve mechs, so basically you're just stuck with whatever you have. We're going to be changing things as we go along through this scenario. The rules will shift and, and change because this is basically the first campaign to make sure everything is working well, which is why it's a small island scenario. In the description below is the list of all of the units that are participating in the battle. Each one will have a, an abbreviated two letter call sign, which you will see on the maps. Allied markers are in blue, enemy markers are in green. Every turn each player is just stating where they're going to move and attack based on letter and number on the hexes. They also designate which units they're attacking and if they're attacking a mobile unit how many skulls of that mobile unit they're attacking. Each turn their counters are updated at the top to let them know if they're in supply or out of supply. And also the counters on the map board get updated based on their actions every turn. And that's about it. It's fairly simple. The idea was to bring the community together and get a large scale force battle happening. Suggestions are open. The rules will change. We're trying to make it as flexible as we can for everybody. Making sure everybody has something to do every turn, fighting every turn. There's really great communication between all of the players as well. Not everyone can be on at the same time, but that's okay. The turns will end when everybody is reported in and we move on to the next one. Now, some of the players are actually recording the battles for this. You don't have to if you don't want to, that's fine. But what I'm going to be doing for each of the individual battles as we go along for each of the individ individual turns, there will be a list like you see in the description currently, just so people know what units belong to whom. And after that unit designation will be a YouTube link for any videos that are recorded for that turn. So hopefully by the time we get further along, people will be able to at least watch these battles and get a sense that there's something bigger going on, there's a bigger picture fight. The one thing I do like about Rogue Tech is it introduces the ability to travel around the inner sphere and become your own company and build your own units. And while you can do that on the online map and play with players and make changes on the online map, for me, I don't think it kind of gives you the idea that you're part of a bigger scale operation on the ground. What I intend to do with these battle report series is actually try and give players that. Give them the ability to be a part of something bigger and see that bigger battle unfold on the map board. For now it's just a small battle on Lhasa on a small island, but these battles, depending on how many people we get, can take the form of a very large scale map. That way everybody feels like they're contributing to a bigger overall picture. Anyway, I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I'm going to leave this introduction episode here. I know it's probably a little bit disjointed. I'm planning on recording the turn one video shortly after this. Turn one has already been played and we're into turn two now. Things are going quite well, so I hope you tune in to that turn one video and check out the people's playthroughs in the description below. Until next time, we'll see you later.